to just unmute yourself there, Tracy, and we'll we'll just kind of go through this. So I want, as I go through this, I want you all to really listen to, as I'm saying this, that I'm positioning this in such a way that I want this to be really good for Tracy. And this is all about her. And I'm just trying to help her make things perfect for her. Okay. It's not just about finding the dollar value. Like, so how much money do you want to put in? Right. So, um, so Tracy, you know, when it comes to looking at a, at a great plan for your family that involves, okay. you know, protecting your family, you know, saving for your family and just having an awesome plan. Really, there's three different numbers that we typically educate people on. Has anybody ever educated you on how much money that you're supposed to always invest into yourself first? No. Has anybody ever wanted to do that? No. All right. Never. Well, first of all, the, 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 the strategy is you always, with every paycheck, pay yourself first and take care of the rest later. But most people, they take care of everything else. And if anything's left, they try to pay themselves. We educate you to take care of yourself first. So, okay. and in any financial book that you would ever read, almost all of them would give you the idea of always paying yourself at least 10%. So that's sort of the, okay. that's sort of the, um, the recommended Great. amount. Great, when was the last time you had a second opinion? Okay. Um, who said the second opinion there? Is that so, sorry, we're in, um, I'm in a room. Oh, here. sorry. That totally <laughs> threw me off because I was like, what okay. is happening here? I'll go in the kitchen. No, that's okay. It's not a big deal. I was just completely thrown off. I was like, second opinion. But, TV's um, class. It's okay. It's no worries at all. It's totally fine. So there's really three numbers. Now, the bare minimum would be 5% because if you're not doing even 5%, I mean, are you really doing anything? Right? Yeah. So, I mean, less than 5%, there's, there's really nothing happening there. So 5% for you would be 250. Now that would be the bare minimum, but it's a start. 10% would be what would be recommended for you. That's about 500 bucks. We could do some amazing things, but 20% would be if you're in a position where you could really get ahead and really want to save some cash. The reason I ask you this, Tracy, is I want to come back with a plan that is just awesome for you and feels great that you absolutely love. And this is just going to help me customize it for you. So of those three, what would feel the best for you? Would you say uh, the 5%? of 250, the 10% of, of 500, or you know the maybe the 20% of 1,000. Which one of those would feel the best for you? 20% of 1,000. Yeah, so, so you, you'd feel great about the 20%. Yeah. Awesome. By the way, that's going to allow me so much flexibility. And when we get back together, you're going to absolutely love it. And here's roughly what I'm going to share with you. And then once I have that, I'll say, look, most of your money is going to be going towards some incredible tax-free investments. And I'm just going to use a little bit to protect your wealth, protect your family. But I'm also going to be able to show you how you can set that up so you could actually get all of your money back in the end. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to share it with you. I like that. So let's just kind of freeze here for a second. Getting the amount of money that somebody wants to put in a plan is a very important part of any plan. Let's do, I want to do a couple of quick takeaways from that, that little portion. What did I just go through? What did you guys and girls notice? What would you share? Uh, Reese, what, what would you share from that? I liked at the end that you're like kind of creating some excitement and curiosity, just like, Hey, the majority of this money is going to go to some, some great tax-free investments. So I'm going to use a little bit of it to protect that wealth. I think that's a really good, like, Presetting, presetting the line, um, line. Yeah, awesome. And keep in mind, at this point, people are normally have their energy directed to how much am I paying for insurance? That's what they're thinking. That's what they're thinking. So they're like, how much? In their mind, they're thinking, I got to pay five hundred bucks. Geez, I can't pay five hundred bucks. So I have to help them in their mind to know that hey, we're not paying anything. You know, this is not about paying. Hey, we're going to save most of your money. We're going to show you how to get it back. We're going to protect your family. This is to create a perfect plan for you that you love and feel good about. Right now, 
when I went through that, would you guys say there was any pressure on anything? No, oh, zero pressure, right? Would you say it felt pretty good? Felt pretty good. Just would you, did she, did she feel like educated and like she she was did she feel like she was in control there? That's very important. She should feel like she was in control. That's very important. Um, did anybody notice my uh, the the the, the in, inflection of my voice when I said the ten percent? Do you guys notice that? I was like, so listen, listen. I'll say it again. So if I say, hey, Tracy, so, you know, do you think maybe just like only the, the 250 and that'd be a good place to start as a minimum or the 10%, you know, which is the recommended, I could do some great things with that. Or if it was possible, the 20% to really get ahead. You guys notice, did I sort of direct her there? Yeah, with, but, I, but did I also give her full control of what she wanted to choose? What does she feel better about? You're gonna feel better about that now. If there's no possible way she can afford it, that's that's different. But I'm still going to, the more money I can put into a plan for her, the better it is for her. Make sense? The more money she's saving, the better it is for her. All right. Sorry. Was, uh, Stacey, did you have your hand up there quick? For a, yeah. Let's, let's go through this quickly as well. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things for me is just like setting that amount, because I think as the client, you have no idea like what you're about to be sold. Right. So there's a little bit of anxiety on like, I have no idea what costs are. I don't even know if this is something that's possible for me. So I think just to leave them in your, in the appointment to go away from it, um, excited about what's to come to you, knowing that it's affordable, what's to come to you and that it's something that you actually are prepared for, I yeah. think is very, very valuable for people. Yeah, fantastic. And and uh, and thanks for sharing that. I'll actually share one more thing that I almost always say. So as I would wrap up and I'd say, by the way, Stacy, just so you know, so I'll just kind of recap it. The way that we're going to set this up, and in most cases, this is the way that we're going to set it up. If I can get a great insurance plan with a portion of, of universal life co coverage, or if there's some whole life there, if it makes sense for them, then a good chunk of that is going to the investment. Like, like today, um, Victoria and I did, um, you know, we did a, a nice universal life plan. It was 300 bucks. Well, the insurance only cost 125. So 175 technically is getting invested. So, and we were going to do some money into a tax-free savings account and do some critical illness. So in this case, most of the money is going to, to tax-free money. You know, so I want to tell them, hey, most of your money, I'm just going to show you how to maximize most of your money and grow some tax-free wealth. And then we're just going to use the last little bit to protect the rest of your wealth. But I'm also going to show you how we can set it up where you can get all your money back. And by the way, Stacey, just so you know, this is going to be flexible. I'm going to give you some flexibility. If you really, really had to, and we had to go to a smaller amount, you're going to be able to do that right? But I'm also going to leave you some growth on the other side. So if we really want to start stashing some cash in there, so there's going to be a lot of flexibility. I just wanted to make sure you know that. Does that, does that feel pretty good? All right. So again, just creating some flexibility, making her feel good about it, guiding her through it. Too many people, and I know this, are like, you know, so, you know, they'll go through insurance and then they're like, so 250, 500 or a thousand, you know, and they're like, man, shit, I don't want to, the thing I almost spent 500 bucks on insurance. Oh man, that doesn't sound great at all. So setting that up in that way is going to be, um, it's going to be very, very, it's going to be great. It's going to help you close a lot more business. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you uh, another, this is a, a sort of a pre-close that's going to save you some time and maybe some money. So <clears throat> Before actually going to do any paperwork, build any plans, you know, and do anything, I'm going to get a sense for if this person's going to get qualified. I'm not going to go off and build a bunch of plans and go through an application, put in the paperwork and do all of this stuff in the end to find out that they couldn't get it. Like, I would rather find that out as soon as I can up front. Or if there's going to be a challenge, great. Let me do some homework before we get started to make sure. So this is what I would say. So let's say I was sitting with, um, you know, with Jenna and, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about the insurance and how it's all going to look. Say, so, hey, Jenna, you know, by the way, 
as we go to, to look at helping you set up this awesome protection plan, you know, we really, we have to put in an application. So I, I can't guarantee that we can get it, but I'm going to do my best to help you get it. Okay. But there's really three reasons why you might be denied. One of them is a, is a drug history. The other one is a health history. And the other one is kind of like a life, life history. So drug history is, um, is really like uh, whether it was from a doctor, like taking lots of medications over the counter or doing some pretty hard drugs, you know, uh, otherwise, you know, if somebody, if, if somebody said in an application, Hey, I was doing a little uh, cocaine there last week. Uh, so, you know, or whatever, I mean, you're just probably not going to get the insurance, you know, the second one is health his, is health history. So if you've had health challenges, diabetes, you know, blood pressure, has there, has there been heart problems, cancer, anything like that, that could definitely make it a challenge. And the third one is, is in the life history. Now, this is more like criminal record. You got lots of speeding tickets or you spent some time in jail. And there's been some charges because, you know, the insurance company's like, this is a pretty dangerous person. We don't know if we want to give them insurance. So those would be the three reasons why you might not get the coverage. So before doing anything, Stacy, is there any reason you could think of why you might have any challenges at all just before I go and do that homework? Right? This is a great question to ask. I recommend asking these three questions at all times. Number one, I'm saving myself time. Number two, I'm also positioning. How did I position that? You guys, positioning is really important. Um, there's a few books that I get you to read. Um, the Art of Persuasion and The Art of Persuasion. They're two different books, but they're both on sales. They're both incredible. I'd get you to read Master the Art of Selling. And if you're not, listen, all right. And again, this message is sent with love. But if you're not making, you know, at least 10 grand a month here, your closing skills or your work ethic, I mean, it could be both, but if you feel like you are working really hard and you're not making 10 grand a month, then your closing skills have to improve. I mean, that's, that's all, that's all it is. Your closing skills have to improve, right? So if you're not making 10,000 bucks a month, or, you know, if you're really part-time and you're not making like five grand a month, then your closing skills have a lot. Would you guys agree? Your closing skills have some room to improve? Okay, good. Again, if you disagreed, we'd have an argument. No, just kidding. I wouldn't argue with you. Arguments are silly. Nobody wins. <laughs> I wouldn't argue with you. Um, but you, you know, I, I just wouldn't fully agree with you. Um, so anyways, those books are great books. But this, I'm going to share with you an exercise. I would get you to audio record yourself. Study yourself. Listen to yourself. And I want you to listen for closing questions. I want you to listen for conviction. You know, I want you to listen for, um, I mean, energy. You know, I want you to listen when somebody comes up with an objection, what's your process? When somebody comes up with an injection, do you kind of get a little tense or do you say, hey, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked, you know, and you kind of go into it and then diffuse and isolate the objection, right? Pose a value offer and then reclose because that's what a closer would do. You know, they ask the question, that's a great question. Let me ask you this. Have you ever thought about this? What if we were able to do this, this, and this? So my recommendation is we go ahead and take a look at that. How does that sound? right? So study yourself because you'll learn more studying yourself than you, you will studying other people. And, you know, there's a part of my career that, um, you know, I'd be honest with you. I, I couldn't close anything. I couldn't close a door. I tried I'm like this door won't close. I couldn't literally close anything. And I, here I am working and I was, and I wasn't closing things and I wasn't making money. Number one, I had to get into a better market. That's really important, getting into a better market. And through recruiting, you get into a great market of great people. Um, but number two, I wasn't as good as I thought I was. And I will send this with love. Let me put it this way. I'll just put it this way. You could probably be a lot better than you are. Uh, it's probably a better way to phrase it than you're not as good as you think you are. 
um, you could probably be a lot better than you are. But if you're not studying yourself and really paying attention then how are you actually like, because you're probably presenting the same information the same way every time. That's probably what's happening. You're doing the, you're saying the same things about the same way. And that's why you're getting the same results. So study yourself. If you're on a zoom, I recommend setting up your phone recorder, put it on airplane mode. So nobody can mess with you and put on airplane mode and then record it and then listen back to it that night. And listen to yourself and you will learn that's that that was a game changer for me i thought i was so good you guys i'm like i'm the best and then i listen to some of my audios and i'm like whoa that is not how i sound you don't sound how you think you sound trust me you do not sound the way you think you do <laughs> so that's a great so i just wanted to leave you on that last thought i wanted to share some resources with you that were great for me Anything from Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar. Uh, those are great books. Those other books that I mentioned are great books. Um, but yeah, thanks, guys. I hope you got some great value from this. And again, again, I hope that I've given you some specific things that you can do to go out. And, and listen, you're not, you're not very far from making 10 grand a month if you're not making it right now. You're not far from making five grand a month if you haven't done that. You're not far from really exploding your business with just tweaking your skills, intensifying your work ethic, and putting a little bit more energy into everything you do. Your business, can, your business can change very fast here, and it can improve very fast here if you improve very fast here. All right? So that's what this class is all about. Hopefully you guys got some great notes. And listen, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna pop off this code. We're gonna jump back off. You got about, well, two minutes for a water break or something. We're going to jump back onto the 699 code. There's a whole bunch of big announcements. There's cruise ship stuff. Speaking of being a closer, there's all sorts of great stuff happening. We're going to jump on the 699 code in two minutes. We'll